So if you've been following the Democratic Party primary from the very beginning and you've been paying attention to the criticism that progressives have been lobbying against Kamala Harris, you would know that she has a very poor record as a prosecutor. Her record on criminal justice is absolutely atrocious. Everything from supporting cash bail to civil asset forfeiture to intervening to stop a trans inmate from getting gender confirmation surgery. I mean, her record is atrocious. Now, at this debate stage, Tulsi Gabbard took the gloves off. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place. That impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. As the elected Attorney General of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about reentering former offenders and getting them counseling. It Thank is you. why, and because I know that criminal justice Thank system you, is Senator. so broken, that I am an advocate for what Thank we you, need Senator. to do to your, not your only decriminalize, but legalize marijuana in the United States. I want to, I want to bring uh, Congresswoman uh, Gabbard back in. You're responsible. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not, and worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that, and the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Senator Harris. <laughs> My entire career, I have been opposed, personally opposed to the death penalty, and that has never changed. And I dare anybody who is in a position to make that decision, to face the people I have faced, to say, I will not seek the death penalty. That is my background. That is my work. I am proud of it. I think you can judge people by when they are under fire, and it's not about some fancy opinion on a stage, but when they're in the position to actually make a decision, what do they do? When I was in the position, of having to decide whether or not to seek a death penalty on cases I prosecuted, I made a very difficult decision that was not popular to not seek the death penalty. History shows that, and I am proud of those decisions. Senator Harris, thank you very much. Wow. Now, as you saw there, Kamala Harris did not know how to respond. She was completely caught off guard by Tulsi Gabbard. And hours after the debate was over, she still clearly did not know how to respond to Tulsi Gabbard because rather than addressing her criticism directly, she just tried to smear Tulsi Gabbard as an Assad apologist, which is just downright embarrassing. I mean, if that's all you got rather than answering for your own record, then you're not in good shape. You're not in good shape. And we've seen the way that she reacts to whenever somebody talks about her criminal justice record before. Uh, because at the first CNN town hall, I believe somebody brought up her criminal justice record and it was incredibly awkward. You know, she tried to change the subject and she went to her go to list of talking points of all the good things that she's done. Now, sure, you can take credit for all of the good things that you've done, but there's some really horrific things in your record that people are expecting you to explain. And whenever it's brought up, there's just no explanation whatsoever. And it's awkward. It's weird. You know, for you to withhold evidence that would exonerate people, for you to utilize, you know, prison labor, these are all things that are permanent blemishes on your record. And I think that if the American people see that and they start Googling Kamala Harris's record, 
This could badly damage Kamala Harris. This has the potential to drive down her numbers. Now, whether or not that will happen, I'm not sure because she is currently surging. So I don't know if this will be enough to offset that surge. But certainly, you know, maybe Tulsi capped it at a minimum. That's kind of what I'm expecting, right? And at least to have been capped because that was a devastating blow. Tulsi Gabbard went in with a flamethrower uh, when it comes to Kamala. And the weirdest part is that for how prepared Kamala was at the last debate, seemed like every single line was rehearsed. Everything from the, you know, hey guys, the American people don't want a food fight. They want to know how we're going to put food on the table to her taking on Joe Biden. You know, she had t-shirts made beforehand saying, I was that little girl, you know, waiting for that moment. Um, I don't know how she didn't anticipate this criticism from Tulsi Gabbard. Now, I didn't expect Tulsi to go after her criminal justice record, but Tulsi, um, she made it very clear that she was going to to go on the offensive against uh, Kamala Harris. The fact that Kamala did not take that threat seriously is really weird to me because last week, Tulsi was criticizing Kamala Harris. She was name dropping her and saying, I don't think that she is qualified to be president. And here's examples X, Y, and Z. So Kamala should have been prepared for that, but she absolutely was not ready. And Tulsi seized on that opportunity. And I think Tulsi may get a little bit of a boost for this. Certainly, if Tulsi doesn't get a boost, then Kamala should get a little bit of a decrease. I don't know if it's going to happen. It's too early to predict. But not a good look for Kamala. Not a good look at all. Good work on Tulsi because this is something that needs to be called out. The media has not done their job at educating people about Kamala Harris's record because she's kind of the media darling, right? Because we want a candidate who is ostensibly progressive, but, you know, overall won't. Uh, upset the status quo and so they've kind of given her a pass but you know you've got to call out these things because if you want to be president it's better that this comes out now than in a general debate you know against Donald Trump where it could be devastating because even though Donald Trump obviously has a horrible record we know he's going to tout his criminal justice bill that he signed into law last year over and over and he's going to call out you know Kamala Harris and we could be seeing another situation where he tries to outflank Kamala from the left so these things need to be called out and uh, I would have expected Kamala to have some type of response because her record is very poor the fact that we saw nothing shows that maybe she's not as prepared as we initially thought after that first debate kudos to Tulsi this was great work here